Hello everyone, this is Aníbal Boscovoynik from Brookhaven National Lab. I am part of the TRAP-IN team. TRAP-IN is a technology based on the basic research we have been doing at Brookhaven National Lab for about seven years now. And, and it's a platform to produce and contain uh, noble gases. These are this uh, inert, um, very non-reactive gases to the very right of the periodic table. And because they're non-reactive, they're hard to, to trap and contain. And you may wonder, why do we care about trapping noble gases? And the truth is that there's a variety of applications where noble gases are important, ranging uh, from preventing lung cancer to industrial production of these gases. And these are markets in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, so now the way uh, trapping works is the following. We have a silicate cage in contact with the metal, and if the conditions are right, then we have a noble gas such as xenon, krypton, or radon next to the cage. When the noble gas gets in the cage, uh, it remains trapped there indefinitely until we choose to remove it by heating up uh, the material. And one of the cool things about trap in is that uh, it's very selective to noble gases only. So if we have a, a gas mixture, it only retains the noble gases and the rest of the material uh, of the gases do not uh, stay in the cage. So we want to emphasize that uh, TRAP-IN is a platform uh, technology. And there are two ways uh, in which this can uh, uh, operate. We can trap the noble gas by confinement, and we can also use it for gas separation. And there's a variety of applications related to these ways of using it. Uh, we have, for example, nuclear waste remediation, radon detection, radon removal from buildings, and uh, production of uh, xenon and krypton. We're going to focus on the uh, radon removal and uh, xenon and krypton applications just to illustrate two very different uh, uh, markets. And these are, as I mentioned before, markets in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But there are other uh, applications, uh, some of which uh, are of interest to the government and healthcare. Uh, for example, nuclear non-proliferation, nuclear energy, and medical isotopes. Uh, one of the ways in which we, we, we can think of using this technology is by having something that looks like an air purifier, where we have our uh, filter uh, material. Uh, then our cages are in, in, in these filter cartridges. And if we have a mixture of gases, including the noble gas, that would be that uh, NG uh, symbol there, when the gas mixture goes through, only the noble gas remains trapped in the filter material. And we're going to go now in, in something in a more specific application of this. So radon is a naturally occurring uh, radioactive gas that's known to accumulate inside of structures. The inhalation of radon is known to cause lung cancer, and it's estimated that about 21,000 deaths a year occur from lung cancer derived from radon. Now, radon inhalation is a problem across the U.S. It's estimated that anywhere between 6 and 15 percent of single-family homes actually have radon levels that are above the EPA-recommended safe levels. In addition to single-family homes, larger uh, commercial buildings, and multifamily and apartment complexes have also been found to have raised or dangerous levels of radon. So the current methods for removing radon are generally negative air pressure systems. In single family homes, this generally involves the installation of a suction pipe, which originates in the basement where radon accumulates, runs through the flooring of the, of the uh, house, and terminates outside of the house, where simply it just draws the air from the basement up and out. In general, these systems cost between $700 and $1,400. In contrast, um, larger commercial buildings, such as apartment complexes, generally get rid of radon through air handling systems, such as HVAC. But our research has actually shown that this is not always effective on a per household or per um, room basis. Now, we believe that our technology provides a low cost, easy to use alternative to these negative air pressure systems. We would envision implementing our technology in one of two ways. The first is through a standalone system, which we envision being similar to a dehumidifier, only with radon where an end user would simply plug in a unit into their wall, which would cost about $100, uh, and occasionally change out a $20 cartridge for removing the radon. Alternatively, we've, we've, um, we are currently looking into licensing our technology into existing air purification systems, where they simply would incorporate our technology within their air systems to add an extra layer of protection against radon. Now, at the moment, we're estimating the market value for our standalone system to be about $96 million, with an additional $19 million per year coming from the cartridge. 
So in summary, we believe that our technology has the ability to act disruptively in the radon removal space by providing a lower cost alternative, easily implementable technology for removing radon. In addition, our technology is able to remove radon at the point of implementation versus just general removal as was seen with the other systems. The low cost of our technology allows us to also address low-income families that are often either uh, priced out of the installation of home mitigation systems or living in buildings which do not possess, possess sufficient enough uh, air circulation to remove radon. Beyond the U.S., we believe we can expand into international markets where radon is also a problem. And to emphasize trapping as a platform technology, I would like to turn your attention to the industrial production of xenon and krypton. These gases are produced at what we call a gas refinery under a process called cryogenic distillation. And without going into too many details here, I'd like to point out that some steps involved in this process are quite energy intensive. Xenon and krypton can be used for different applications like electronics, anesthetics, satellites manufacturing, lighting, and research. Their market uh, is uh, of about $300 million per year, and it is expected to grow in the next couple of years. And therefore, it makes sense to improve this, this process further. And that's where trapping comes in. Adding trapping to the existing gas refineries can provide a facilitated production of xenon and krypton. With its selective trapping technology, we can achieve high purity gases required by industry while providing a reduction in production cost. And I should say here that although we are still working on a rigorous techno-economic analysis, we estimate this reduction to be of about 25%, mostly associated with energy cost savings. And I would like to emphasize that trapping can be retrofitted to existing plants. And here we have potential customers that we could partner with in the future to develop this technology further. So now uh, going into the timeline of trapping, as I mentioned before, this technology is based on research that we've been doing at the Brookhaven lab for about seven years. And we have a, a starting going into the application side. We obtained a grant from the Technology Commercialization Fund uh, in partnership with the company Forge Nano to scale up the material and to go into applications related to nuclear energy. We're also expecting some additional funding for uh, uh, validation of the material for nuclear non-proliferation applications. And we uh, want to start partnering with the industry to develop prototypes for radon trapping and for production of uh, xenon. So we're looking for investment for that. We've been doing customer discovery for a few months and we're uh, looking into licensing as well of this technology to companies uh, to which we would provide consulting services uh, in the future. And I said, as I mentioned before, uh, partnerships with industry is a, an important part of our business uh, plan. This is the trapping team. You heard before from uh, Dr. Mateus Mello and Dr. Brian DiMarco. We also have Dr. Purni Upadia, our tech transfer manager in our team, and Ivel bosco Voynich is talking. And we've been working as well for a few months with our business advisors, Dave Hamilton from uh, CBIP, which is an incubator program at Stony Brook University, with Mark Wilson from New Yorks, and with uh, Shruti Sharma and Heidi Anderson from CBIP uh, as well. And we want to expand our team. We're looking for a product engineer to work on the, on the prototypes that I mentioned before. And I would like to end by uh, emphasizing that trap is a platform technology that can be used for uh, trapping novel gases which are inert and they're therefore hard to trap. We have a patent pending protecting this technology and we're seeking investment to mature this technology to form partnerships with industry and we're very much looking forward to talking to you during the Q&A uh, section or if you want to talk to us outside of uh, this venue there's my contact information uh, as well. Thank you very much.